Welcome to the We Are Libertarians 2020 Libertarian Candidate Interviews. Uh, I am Hody Johns. I am your host, and I am joined today by uh, a new, fresh, fresh voice. I know we're a little bit into the debates now, but and so may, maybe you heard of him, maybe you haven't, but you'll be glad you you you've met him now. Uh, we uh, it's Keenan Keenan Dunham. Did I pronounce that correctly? Correct. Yeah. All right. Awesome. And uh, he's a uh, running libertarian candidate for president. So how are you doing today? Doing great. Great to be here. Awesome, man. Well, thanks for coming on, taking the time. Uh, like I, I tell all our candidates, the, the debate questions are all curveballs. These questions are all straightforward. A lot of people like the curveballs. They like, in fact, most of the candidates, I even think, prefer not knowing because they like that element of surprise. Uh, the libertarian types love to think on their toes. Uh, the reason that all these questions are fixed is so that everybody can get an apples to apples comparison. They can see how you answered a question the same way as somebody else answered a question. So this is more just to compare and contrast against the other candidates. Uh, the debate will, of course, give you uh, say more about where you stand on the exact issues. So very briefly, the first question, every other question is about politics. But this first one, just tell me about yourself personally, completely outside of politics. Job, hobby, interests, family, friends, anything that you would find that you think voters would find relevant. Yeah, my name is Keenan Dunham. I'm from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Um, my dad was stationed here during Vietnam and he was also stationed in, stationed in Thailand and uh, met my mom here. And, uh, and uh, both, both sides of my family go back to the Revolutionary War. And one of my ancestors is Deacon John Dunham who was on the Mayflower and uh, had 11 children in the colonies and uh, had a lot of descendants. And I'm also, I'm also a writer. I like to write a lot. And uh, I've written an RPG called Necrotopia, which is out now. And um, I love to study and uh, do philosophy and read philosophy. And I love to research and uh, spread liberty. Awesome, man. Great. Uh, so let's get into, I guess, the semi-politics. Now, I find that almost nobody... Now, you may be an exception since you have ancestors that go to the Revolutionary War, but most people are first-generation, like, libertarian types. Even if they're not, I think libertarians are such the type that they don't force that lifestyle on their kids, so they get there somehow. So what's really your liberty journey, your liberty story? Right. Well, I'd like to say that everybody is really a libertarian or a voluntarist because actually, actually, that's the natural state of things. And what we're doing is we're bringing back the government and uh, the society back to the, the norm, which is you control your life and you determine your destiny. And I guess as far as my journey uh, in my life, uh, in 2000, by 2012, I was really disillusioned with Barack Obama and the Democrat Party. And I had what? worked in politics before that, and uh, uh, I just started watching Ron Paul a lot and uh, studying on my own, and uh, you know, like Murray Rothbard and others. And, and then I uh, decided in 2013 I was going to start studying for and, and ran for president. Uh, all the well, I'd already done presidential campaigns before with Dennis Kucinich when I was back when I was a Democrat in 2004. But I became a libertarian in 2013 and, and ran for president in 16. And I was the youngest candidate ever for president. I was actually uh, 35, only a few months in July of 16 before the election day. And uh, I went to the national convention and some of the state conventions. And uh, of course, ended up endorsing Gary Johnson when he won the nomination. And gained a lot of, uh, you know, interesting uh, experiences and contacts and and right now i'm the vice chair of the Horry county libertarian party in south carolina oh great wow so uh you've been on this journey for a while now and uh yeah. and from a i guess uh, it's funny that 35 is such a young age to run for president but you've been been in it for a while <laughs> cool uh so we're gonna go over the next three questions are all related it's your it's your top three list your priorities and what what are the biggest problems facing america and how you'd fix with fix them so let's just start with number one what's the let's we're going to work backwards so we'll start assuming that you've been elected president so okay. what is the biggest problem that you see america's fa americans facing 
And what would you as president, what would be your solution to that problem? Yeah, that would be the wars for oil. Uh, the reason we've gotten into wars in the last 20 or 30 years is because of uh, trying to have a hegemony over oil resources. And there's no need for that anymore, even even if you said that we used to. We don't anymore, for sure. We're a net exporter now, I believe, yeah? Uh, well, you know, with green energy taking over fossil fuels, I just, you know, it's just a military uh, trap that we're going to be in an endless cycle of getting oil for more wars. Yeah. And uh, I think the solution for that is threefold. And foreign aid, so countries don't depend on us, all of them. Um, also, end all oil subsidies. I think there shouldn't be any energy subsidies for green energy or for oil. The government is so involved in both, they really need to get out of both. And then close as many foreign bases so we're not the police of the world as well. Let's close as many foreign bases as possible. Great. Uh, definitely, uh, definitely will appeal to a lot of libertarians there. Uh, what's the, so what's problem number two and how you, would, how you would knock that out? I would say the second biggest problem is the, uh, the, the disrespect and attacks on civil liberties that have happened in the last I would say since George Bush Jr. since the uh, last 20 years. And we need, basically to solve that, we need to elect as many liberty candidates as possible, uh, as long as they believe in liberty, believe in the Constitution, and, uh, you know, libertarians, but also we need to reach out to the Republican Party and, and the Democrat Party, and also uh, we need to enforce the Constitution and disband the deep state, uh, disband the deep state by not allowing warrantless wiretaps or searches and uh, not let law enforcement investigate things that aren't crimes. Uh, the biggest problem with the deep state and what the deep state is, is uh, investigating things that aren't crimes to look for crimes. Law enforcement is only supposed to be reactive where they see a crime, then they go in and solve and arrest that problem. But that problem with the deep state is they're using as much resources as possible just to control the populace. That's uh, that's absolutely true, uh, and I'm I'm glad you brought up reaching out to the others because we're going to get to that in just a second here. But um, did I hear within there like is there a general solution that you would offer to uh, you cover? It's tough because you brought up so many problems, <laughs> you know, within right. the within the one issue. What what would kind of I would yeah was well, it a discourse a thing? Civil, Civil Liberties Act to go through Congress okay. that reestablishes the Constitution as the norm, and it doesn't have to change the Constitution. And really, all of this uh, deep state activities are illegal anyway. <laughs> yeah, just uh, actually adhere to it. Right. Uh, right. So how about problem number three? Yeah, third on my rank, I would say medical, medical cannabis uh, is, the, is another huge problem. And uh, it affects many people, many lives, and many different uh, uh, issues. As, and even uh, opioid addiction can, you know, can be mitigated, and we need research into CBD. So it, CBD and THC and cannabis all need to be taken off schedule one. Uh, put much lower on the F, on the DEA schedule and the FDA's, uh, you know, reaction to the Schedule One. You know, that needs to change, and it needs to be legalized in all states. I live in South Carolina, where it's not legal except CBD is now legal nationally. I, you know, I'd love to get people's help to legalize it here. And also, basically, I think the courts are going to find that uh, if someone wants medical cannabis, then we can't deny them any state. So hopefully it'll go to the Supreme Court soon and it'll just be legal everywhere. Yeah, I'm glad you brought up that last part because it's, uh, it's what I remember watching, I was watching C-SPAN. Of course, I'm a nerd, so I watch C-SPAN. <laughs> and uh, they, they were talking about the scheduling of marijuana and everybody was in agreement that it was misscheduled. Right. But, but it didn't change. It's like literally every single person in con Congress was like, yeah, it's probably on the wrong schedule, but they right. didn't do anything. And it's like, oh man, it's, <laughs> somebody's got to pull the, pull the trigger on this. Yeah. The Supreme court could actually change the schedule just if they found that there was a single case where that was not applicable, you know, they could make it illegal to have the schedule one on there. I think libertarians probably have been compiling a few lists where maybe one, <laughs> maybe at least one case would apply on that. Right. All right. So uh, I hate to do this to you, but we're going to take away the presidency from you. We're going to uh, now push you through an election. We're going to assume you've won the primary and 
going forward and we're, we're campaigning against, uh, you know, the Republican, the Democrat, Green Party, all that, all that business. So my biggest concern with that election is really the appeal and how we get through on these on these general elections. We had a great opportunity a few years ago, got 3.8 percent, which we, some people were like, oh, it's an unprecedented success. And then others were like, man, 3.8 percent against Trump and, and uh, Hillary. I feel like we could do better. So I'm kind of screening and asking the candidates for how they would how they would improve on appealing to more Americans. So um, we're just going to go through the list, uh, both the social liberals, conservatives, as well as the uh, economic liberals and conservatives and your appeal to them. So what is your, for social liberals, you know, Mm -hmm. that are really concerned about um, equality, they are concerned about, uh, especially you see abortion, uh, especially nowadays, they're looking at attacks on women's rights. And, and in some cases, while they have some successes, they do see legislation, even in this last couple of weeks, challenging both of those that are making them go away. What is your appeal to the social liberals in that case? Well, I think uh, I have a good appeal with anybody after they look at my website and they look at my stance on liberty. I want, to, want liberty to be the focus of my campaign. And uh, also uh, the non-aggression principle um, is really, you know, where there's no victim, there's no crime. And uh, that's pretty much the lens where the, the way, the lens that I look a lot of things through. So, um, you know, after you get through all of my presidential plans, which I want to, you know, rapidly increase the economy by legalizing cannabis, gambling, blockchains, and Bitcoin, and also eliminating the federal income tax, just unleash the economy. Um, as far as social liberals, I do support the Civil Rights Act expanded for transgenders as well. Um, and uh, as far as abortion, uh, my personal, you know, pers- in my personal life, I'm pro-life, but I understand that other people, uh, you know, either through a circumstance or by a choice, they want to have abortion. And I have no problem with uh, during a pregnancy, early term abortions, but we should definitely uh, seek to make those early and and uh, look at other avenues all the time as well. So I am a person who compromises on a lot of issues and uh, definitely with abortion, I would compromise and hear all sides of the of the uh, platform on that one. Yeah, for sure. So now let's talk about let's talk about the social conservatives. And you kind of touched on that. This is the latter side. This is the we witness what's happening in New York with the late term abortions. I think everybody's seen a few of those pictures and they are and, and right. perhaps even videos. They're graphic. They're gross. They're horrifying. Uh, you have I think I know for me personally, I see his rights are under under uh, under attack, uh, mm-hmm. you know, tr- not being able to display a cross that can be seen from right. uh, a international highway something like that uh you know i I mean we know what we're talking about we're talking about social secure uh social conservatives i know immigration plays a lot into this how how do we how would you appeal to them i believe it as a president it's my job to uphold the constitution and we already have freedom of religion and freedom of speech and then uh i believe that that should protect our religious rights and our expression of those rights and it's and it all falls down to private property uh, if someone has a beef that you're using religion on, on public property that they're a part of, you might have to not display the Ten Commandments on a public building where people are offended, unfortunately. But, uh, you know, um, things like afterbirth abortion, I'm totally against that, you know, infanticide. Mm-hmm. And um, I, you know, I want to have those avenues like adoption available for everybody. But then, I, you know, we also should extend those to transgenders and gays for adoption as well with an equal right for that. So it's all about everybody compromising and not making the complete dichotomous approach where you can never work with someone who doesn't, who isn't waving your flag basically. Right. No, I I think that that's an excellent point. You, we, right now we have, we have two sides that are both being discriminated against and the false the false, I guess, argument that we're having is which side should be discriminated against more as right. opposed to saying, man, like let, let's, I think we can do right by both the pro-life crowd and the, the transgender community by, uh, 
by yeah fixing, fixing it's not a yes or no question it's all complex issues i think every issue that a presidential candidate is going to deal with is a complex issue and they should take it as a complex issue and and not just say i'm going to wave my my liberal or my conservative wand and and it all goes away you know right so let's uh let's talk about economy now now you got the economic liberals they see the one percent is getting more and more wealthy uh the poor getting more poor that gap is widening uh they see a lot of wage gap issues between uh i mean within genders within races uh a lot of those economic issues how would you appeal to somebody that already has a democrat on the ballot why would you be the better option for them well actually i believe we need to get rid of the uh the state controlling all those things and if they would you know if they would look from my point of view as seeing that the government is never going to be man be able to manage any of those things correctly uh just being a bureaucrat doesn't give you expertise in any of those and and then it's your life anyway so what we need to do is uh with things like medicare we need to have private uh savings accounts for medicare and for social security and then get rid of the personal income tax for to allow growth and choice. And we already have the best medical uh, uh, industry in the world, and it's growing. And we need to compete to bring doctors here, and we still need to make, make it uh, competitive for them making money and also for um, education. Although I would like to work on student debt, I think we should have a cap at 10 years for paying off loans, not, you know, indefinite uh, for at least the federal student loans. Um, that would help a lot of people going into the medical field. And I've also looked at the first uh, loans to forgive would be doctors and first responders if you're going to start forgiving uh, student loans. And then that's, that's also a field where people go back to school for more special specialization and more skills so that we can increase our medical field by forgiving student loans. Go. Cool. And then uh, let's, let's look at the other side. Those economic conservatives, mm -hmm. they of all people have witnessed government just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, they see everyone's wages across the map, not keeping up with inflation. Uh, when they've got a Republican on the ballot, most likely Trump, possibly somebody primaries against them, but most likely Trump, you know, why right. would they vote for your economic plan as opposed to the one that, that the president's putting forward? Well, let's just talk about Trump uh, directly. And he is uh, not someone who's going to change the system itself. As far as the economic system, he is still in the fossil fuels and subsidies mode. And you can also see that he, because he's doing all these tariffs, he's, He's protective of industry, but he's not unleashing it like I would, which would be close the Federal Reserve and the income tax, make uh, Social Security and Medicare uh, optional savings accounts. Um, and, you know, I have no problem having a, a legal immigration border and uh, we need to have, uh, we need to end the welfare state and have photo ID workers visas and allow as many people in the country as want, but they're not going to uh, take all the welfare when they come in. They need to have IDs that show that they can't vote until they're citizens. They can't get welfare until they're citizens, but they'll have to pay uh, the sales taxes or whatever taxes are going around and they'll have the photo ID work visas. So we, so we know who they are and if they're committing a crime, then they can be deported. Right. All right. So uh, I hate to even take this away from you, but now let's try to get you through a nomination process, especially with the Libertarian Party. <laughs> so, so going Feeling back. Giving it away. That's what you're doing. <laughs> right. Going back one more time, you know. So we, there's a lot of different factions in the Libertarian Party. Uh, everyone says it's like herding cats. And frankly, when people value individualism, it's just always going to be that way. We've had this problem since the inception of the party, and it will always be, I guess, the problem, or some people would say benefit, <laughs> is that we are uh, none of us going to agree with each other and come together much. So let's talk about how people might come together on you uh, as a presidential candidate. So let's start with the libertarian left. You look at the libertarian socialists, uh, you got mutualists over there, you know, Mike Shipley, um, 
the, those type of type of guys uh, that are that are finding a home within the, the the Libertarian Party. What would your appeal be to to someone who's a, who considers themselves a left libertarian? I've talked with many libertarians, and uh, I you know it's not too much different. What I would say to the libertarian left to right, I would say we for both of them, I would just answer it both at once. Uh, we need a choice of Social Security and Medicare, and no wall. Uh, we need to end the, the wars for oil. We, have, we need to have a path for citizenship and the welfare state. Have workers ID, uh, workers, uh, photo ID, workers visas. And uh, I think we need to find the commonalities and work together towards goals. I think the biggest thing is to uh, make the party goal oriented. And it has been, you know, like we've helped legalize cannabis in many states and we're activists. The libertarians are activists. And uh, when we all come together on a common goal, we are much stronger and we've accomplished a lot already in the last 10 years. So this is just the beginning, I think. And uh, we need to, you know, encourage each other and get a lot of candidates in every office that we can across the country and run for office. Everybody who's a libertarian should run for office. We're the future, I think. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, that's definitely something that uh, Nick Sarwark has been pushing, uh, wanting to see more candidates on ballots, because that's when we get the most... It's hard to de debate because we do get the most lip service that way. Mm -hmm. That's when people... We wish that people would think outside of the ballot box, but sometimes they just won't have the discussion right. until that's what's going on. Right. So let's flip to the other side. Let's talk about those right libertarians. Mm -hmm. You've got the, the ANCAPs. Um, you know, the Mises Institute, you know, Michael Heiss, uh, the right guys. Um, where, what, I, I, some people would say the ANCAPs are in the middle, but let's see, at least say the paleo libertarians, you know, okay. maybe, maybe the closed borders types, the right. Lee Rockwells. What's, uh, what's your biggest, I guess, appeal to uh, the right libertarian, the people who consider themselves on the right? Well, path to citizenship and ending the welfare state, I would say. Uh, definitely the privatization, uh, the ending of the, uh, I mean, the uh, choice for Social Security and Medicare are big. It's all about uh, taking the budget out of the hands of the government because we know the bureaucrats mm -hmm. can't, well, they'll, they'll just waste it all. I mean, we can't rely on Social Security for another 20 years, and I cannot expect it to be there when I'm older mm -hmm. because it'll be rated constantly. Every budget will rate Social Security, and I just want it to be a savings account immediately. And, and people that have access to their own money. That's uh, that that will appeal to a lot of people, especially people that uh, aren't going to ever end up seeing a dime of right. Uh, so let's talk about the let's talk. Let's just let's call them anarchists uh, real quick. Okay. They would call themselves the moderates. Of course, this is uh, <laughs> the most most times seem as an extreme view, but just that want no government. This might be the toughest one because they don't even want to vote on a president. Um, right. And so they don't, they have to be persuaded to even get to the polls at all. Uh, right. But they are there. And, uh, and, and so what's your appeal to somebody who's just like, my goal is to have no government. What's, what's your appeal to them? Well, I'm not a, I don't consider myself a, just a politician. I consider myself an activist. And I say, well, if we find a common goal, let's work on it. Even if you're not going to participate in elections you want to legalize cannabis, let's, let's use every means necessary. And that's why I run for office because it is, it is a means that's real and it's there and it, it does cause change. And if we got a certain threshold, 5% or 10% or 15%, we'd be in national debates for the presidential elections continuing. We'd have primaries where we'd get national press exposure and it's important to, to go for those goals. And it's within reach right now. And Gary Johnson did get us closer. So uh, let you know, find something that we want to work on, and let's work on it as activists. Cool. All right. And then uh, let's talk about the the other end, I guess the the <laughs> the big government libertarian minarchists, right? The guys who say you know, sub government's okay. We want small government. We think we need defense. Kind of the bare minimums. Uh, this, this is probably, and, and I mean, forgive me for speaking it, but it's probably 90% of the people that show mm -hmm. up, uh, right. to vote for president. What's your biggest appeal to this huge portion of the party? I think it's all about the budget. We need to take as much out of the government's hands as possible and let industry, uh, and ourselves control the future of America and my plans to, uh, 
you know, make choice in Social Security and Medicare are huge and ending the income tax is huge. And, uh, you know, legalizing cannabis, but these are all decentralizing the government and putting choice in our hands. And it's also eliminating the huge behemoths in the budget, like Social Security and Medicare, that the government does not handle well. And that's the reason for being a minarchist, I believe. Yeah. Um, so let's just look at it overall. Uh, you've probably at least seen some of the other candidates. Uh, people that watch my show have had a great deal of exposure. The candidates have done it. And, and of course, you'll get this invitation as well. But uh, due to the debates, they've gotten to meet all the candidates and, 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 and learn about their policies on, in many forms and fashions. With you uh, putting your hat in the ring here, why are you the best of the libertarian candidates? I would say because I'm going to be here no matter what. I'm an activist, and I don't make any promises. I just want to encourage all allies of liberty to work for goals together, work, for, work together for common goals that are for liberty, enhance liberty, enhance our prosperity in America, give our rights back to the citizens, decentralize the government. And, uh, you know, I encourage everybody to look at my website. Uh, it's dunham2020.nationbuilder.com. And I've written huge number of issues pages on there and also education on the uh, NAP, uh, non-aggression principle and voluntarism and also jury nullification uh, and, you know, all, all subjects. I'm trying to answer every question that somebody could have. And if anybody ever sends me an email on the website, I'll, you know, I'll post their issue that they had or answer their question directly. Awesome. So I, I'm, I am just looking up that page right now. <laughs> uh, so let's, we will get back to that. We will, we'll give you another chance to repeat okay. it at the end here. But uh, what, I've worked on a few campaigns before. I'm mm -hmm. happy to be in the media before and now, and I don't think I will ever work on another campaign again. But the reason being is because this is really the most tedious part. The campaigns that I've worked on, mm -hmm. they want to talk about issues 90% of the time, and that's bolts 10% of the time, and mm -hmm. it's the exact opposite. They're working mm -hmm. on raising right making time 90% right. of the time and actually getting a chance to just talk and do what they like the other 10%. So do you have a plan in place to raise money and make the time that's required uh, if you receive the nomination? Yeah, I would start uh, in 2020, in January 2020, and I would be able to campaign full time. I already have campaign staff and volunteers ready. And of course, we'd coordinate on the internet, on my website, on Twitter, on Facebook, et cetera. And I, can, and I went to state and, national, and the national convention last election in 2016, and I can do that again. I can go to state conventions, debates. I can do press. I've done a lot of interviews. Um, I've done a national interview before. So I, you know, I, I get the exposure. I want to get out there and also uh, you know, uh, work on our goals for activism at the same time. And also plan on giving a portion of my uh, campaign donations to charity as well. So I want to have a charity inside my campaign as well. So yeah, I, I, I'm excited and, and uh, I'm ready to do this full steam. Yeah. Awesome. I, I'm a, I am straight up ashamed that you've been on everybody else's radar for so long and I'm just finding out about you. You're like, Hey, are you ever going to get to me at some point? And I was just no, like, cool. it's awesome. I'm glad to be here. Yeah. I, I can't I, wait uh, to debate everybody, you know, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I missed you. But yeah, you're tuning in at the time. The debates have never been hotter and they're just increasing in escalation. They're escalating. So so you're joining at the right time. Awesome. Um, people are wanting to hear more voices, too. They've actually been hoping for more people in, in the ring. So that's great. Um, OK, final question. Uh, where do people now? You already you already said it again, but mm -hmm. uh, where do people learn learn more about you? Where do they find you if they want to get involved or have a yeah. question for you? Where's the right place for them to go? Yeah, I have a, a Twitter handle. It's K Dunham for Peace. I think it's the, the number four. Okay. And uh, of course, my website is up uh, Dunham twenty twenty dot nationbuilder dot com. Mm -hmm. And I'm willing to help other candidates as well, or anybody who's not run for office before and wants to run as a libertarian. I'll, I'll help you. And, you know, I might even help you build your website uh, if you need any pointers or anything. I've actually built a lot. I, I uh, am vice chair of the Libertarian Party in Horry County. And I also work with uh, a couple candidates across the board for, for city council and other elections here. So I've, I've helped other campaigns before as well. So, mm -hmm. you know, I want to work with as many people as possible 
and uh, we have goals and, and let's spread liberty. And the website is dunham2020.nationbuilder.com. I'm on it right now. And along the top is something that says space colon- colonization. So yeah. if that's not incentive to, <laughs> to get you a visit, <laughs> just to read that alone, guys, it's, uh, it's worth a visit. So yeah, dunham2020.nationbuilder.com. Uh, Keith, I appreciate you taking the time. I really look forward Thank to getting you. on that debate stage with the other candidates. I'm going to yeah. throw this in the feed and we'll get you. Uh, we're Libertarians has never been hotter than right now, but we'll absolutely get you in before awesome. the next debate. So people will have had this chance to hear you and uh, and then we'll get a chance to see you. But I'll give you all the information after that. Other than that, Thank you so much for taking the time and, and contacting me and, and making this happen. Yeah, awesome. Thank you for having me. It was great. All right. Anytime. Everybody, thanks for tuning in. Appreciate your Patreon support and giving me the opportunity to meet candidates like this. Until next time, keep fueling the fires of liberty.